Hello, I'm Giles English, one of the co-founders of Bremen Watch Company. Hi, I'm Nick English. I'm one of the co-founders of the Bremen Watch Company. For Giles and I, Bremel started many years ago, and uh, really, I suppose the inspiration for for, for us and the watches came from our father. So as children we spent the whole time in a workshop with him making things. So we still fly aeroplanes we built with him, restore cars um, that we still drive to this day, um, motorbikes, um, but clocks one of the things that really fascinated him. The other passion in his life, which you could probably see from our brand itself, was aviation. We were lucky enough to, to learn how to fly in our early years. Um, so in our teens, and then when it got to sort of the early 90s, Giles and I were doing some of these air shows as well, and sort of the love of flying has always been there. And obviously things sort of changed for us a little bit. Um, a sort of fateful day for us in 1995. There's a March, lovely, um, sunny day, and uh, um, Nick and Dad were out practicing for an air display in a second world aircraft called the Harvard. And they were doing some formation aerobatics, and. Um, one of the guys pulled out of the way with an engine issue. Uh, Nick and Dad didn't know where he'd gone. They took evasive action and went into an inverted spin. Uh, we ended up crashing. Um, I ended up breaking 30 bones. Dad died and um, poor old Giles was uh, waiting to take off and could hear the whole thing happening on the, um, on the intercom. Thinking, my God, you know, what's, what's, what's going on here? Um, and for us, uh, you know, it's a horrific period of our lives, but it was, um, I guess it was that tipping point that really made us go off and value life the way we sort of do today. The name Bremel came from uh, an interesting experience. Nick and I, about three years after Dad's death, were, were flying through uh, France and we got caught in some terrible weather, real rainy, low mist and uh, we knew we were close to an airfield, but couldn't find it, and we were running low on fuel. So we decided to put it down in this French farmer's pea field. And this old boy came out and said, no, look, come put, put your plane in my head, this little hay barn, and uh, wait till the weather's better, and then, then leave. And he really reminded us of our father, had he have lived till his um, 80s, and, uh, um, and his name was Antoine Bremont. So in 2002, Having been involved beforehand in a business restoring historic aircraft, um, we both decided to go off and set up a, a watch brand. But we had this sort of fascination for, for watches. We had a very clear idea of what we wanted to achieve. Uh, obviously, there's this incredible history of British watchmaking, which we're very, very passionate about. Um, but also, we wanted to produce something which was beautifully, beautifully engineered, something you could pick up in 20, 30, 40 years' time, and it'd still look good. We wanted something which an engineer would love, something which was very focused on the mechanics of what was going on. So off we trundle in 2002 to uh, Bien in Switzerland to learn how to sort of make a watch and, and build a brand around uh, beautiful timepieces. But that period um, took us not a year and a half as we told our wives at the time, but it took us five years. So it actually wasn't until 2007 that we were finally ready to, to sell our first watch. So what Bremen's really all about, we came from this desire to build a watch, really in simple terms, you could wear in the boardroom or up Mount Everest, but something which is very classically styled, very British in its look. So the big part of our watches are, how do you really test those? You can test them in a workshop environment, um, but we really wanted to do more of that. and. We were quite lucky, we knew some quite interesting guys at the time. There's sort of Bear Grylls and Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor as they were just setting off on their long way down adventure. And it was about giving these guys these watches and really analysing how those watches turned out um, when they brought them back. It was really a sort of carte blanche to go and properly test these watches, push them, don't look after them. Um, and we learnt a lot, so things like the case hardening, it's taking it from a sort of 316 hardened steel to about a 2,000 Vickers on a surface treatment is, is amazing technology and we've progressed that further so um, we've just developed that for polished cases as well. We're always immensely passionate about trying to bring back as much as watchmaking to the UK 
Um, there's incredible history of watchmaking from these shores. You have, you know, first ship's chronometer, John Harrison, um, Tompion, Graham, Mudge, uh, all these incredible watchmakers. And we led the world sort of 150 years ago. But we're very passionate about trying to bring as much as we can back again. Um, and so if you look at uh, Henley now, all of our watches are assembled, tested, built in Henley, where with our watchmakers, then we've got Silverstone, where many of our watch parts are made as well. You've got, you'll go there and you'll see a bar of metal going in and watch cases coming out and movement parts and things. And that's uh, really, really special for us because that hasn't happened in this country for, for many, many years. And, uh, and that's what really drives uh, Giles and I and, and what Bremel's about now, really. One of the fun partnerships we've uh, been working with over the years is a company called Martin Baker. We started talking to them back in sort of 2007, 2008 about producing a watch which you could only get hold of if you had ejected from an aircraft. So quickly we established that actually the watch should go through the same testing as the, the ejection seats have to. So there started a whole number of years of, and it's still going on, um, testing program where these watches not only went through a live eject ejection testing program, but they went through shock tests. Um, you can imagine these aircraft flying at 80,000 feet. So you've got temperature, you've got uh, vibration and all these things that aircraft have to go through. Or well, they might be at um, on the Nevada desert sitting there in the heat. So we had to go through that, or they might be on an aircraft carrier with the salt fog, and the test went on and on and on. But the end result was this rather remarkable watch called the MB watch, um, the MB1, MB2, um, which had uh, quite some interesting innovation inside it, anti-shock movement mounts and Faraday cages, and it became a very tool-like watch, which um, uh, we're very, very proud of, and which quite a few hundred have been built already for, for ejectees since the time it started. And it's become a sort of iconic watch for Bremont in the sort of the aviation world. JAG has been a really, really fun one for us. And it, it, it started, uh, we got a call up and uh, we went to go and visit the design division in Jaguar and they were developing a car called the 675, which is a concept car, amazingly beautiful um, hybrid car they're developing. And they wanted to create a clock in the car, a mechanical clock, based on our Martin Baker range. We then did a couple more custom cars, I think it was an XJ uh, we did. And then we got a call saying that we're, we're creating some uh, Jaguars for the Queen. Uh, would you like to create a clock for the back of that car? They then approached us, said they were making six um, lightweight E-types. They were recreating those. They had six VIN numbers. They were never, um, never uh, delivered um, in the 60s. And uh, would you create a watch for each one of those cars? And we did that, and uh, I think we all looked at the watch we created and thought, actually, this is a really nice watch. Um, why don't we uh, uh, launch as a commercially available watch? And uh, that's what we did, Basel. Um, and that's really sort of how the whole Dragger relationship developed. And uh, it's, 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 it's a lovely partner and we're, we're honored to be working with them. So we ended up producing a line of watches with Boeing, um, which we're immensely proud of, um, which is all focused around the technology. So it's got fascinating materials. So custom 465 steel, which is a very hard corrosion resistant steel used in the undercarriage of their fighters and their 787 aircraft and things like that. And then you've got, uh, you know, aviation grade titanium in our new range of Boeing watches. And so that relationship started as R&D and it's, it's really gone quite a few stages down from there. Over the years, Bremel's started doing more and more work with the military, which we're immensely proud of. Um, so Giles and I have a small, uh, uh, I suppose background in being sponsored through to university by the Air Force and doing a lot of flying with them there during those days and our father was in the Air Force as well um, and it's great fun working these, with these military organizations so a lot of the uh, you know the land-based uh, forces a lot of the the US Air Force and UK and basically around the world and uh, what's lovely about it is these guys um, have a genuine passion for, for mechanical things too. They fly these incredible aircraft. 
um, and they they genuinely love mechanical watches. So um, uh, having something with a kinship showing the squadron you're in, we work with them to produce something quite special, bespoke watch often, which has their DNA, but very much Bremel DNA as well. Running a watch company is incredibly difficult. You have to be, you're very good as a manufacturer. We are a manufacturing business, but you also have to be very good at marketing, PR, uh, retail. We own our own boutiques. Uh, we now have four uh, brown boutiques. First ever one was the one we're sitting in here, which is Mayfair in London. Um, we then had another one in uh, England and then one in Hong Kong. And then more recently, uh, I'm very excited to, to be announcing the um, the first ever boutique in North America in Madison Avenue. And the reason for these is very simple. We want people to be able to walk in off the street and share the same passion we do for the brand. One thing we also use these Bremel boutiques for our Bremel Ventures Club. So once a month, um, either here or soon to be uh, New York or even Hong Kong, you'll get these uh, ambassadors who work for Bremel coming in and talking about their experiences, what they've been doing with us as a brand. We're still a small company, we still want to be very exclusive. Um, whatever watch you're buying may not be a limited edition, we're only making a few of those watches a year, so in very small numbers. Um, but I think people are buying Bramon because they want something that technically, for the price point, is very good, it's very exclusive, um, and uh, that will last forever, the support that we are as a company giving behind that. We want very close relationships with everyone who buys our watches. That whole relationship is very important to us as a company.